Well, the results are in for the special election in New York's 3rd Congressional District. Democrat Tom Suozzi defeated his Republican opponent, Mozzie Pillip, in the race to replace George Santos. And joining us right now this morning, Basil Smichel, professor of, and director, pardon me, of public policy at Hunter College and former executive director for the New York State Democratic Party, along with Ed Cox, chairman of the New York Republican State Committee. Thank you both for joining us. And I guess I'll start with you, Basil. Uh -huh. Simple question is, why? Why did he wind up winning this race, especially by eight points where he thought it was going to be close? Well, first of all, he had the job before, mm -hmm. so the name recognition is going to be high. Mm -hmm. He's been uh, involved in Nassau County politics for decades now. And, you know, shout out to Queens, because the small part of that district that's in Queens actually did very, very well for him. And I wouldn't say put him over the top, but the, 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 the gap was really significant in that part of Queens. Um, and, and not to mention the fact that I think uh, there was an attempt to sort of nationalize the race. Mm -hmm. He actually just, you know, focused very locally and ran a pretty good campaign. Ed, before we get to the national aspect of it, do you think weather played a part in it? It Especially certainly the, did, the yes. Our, our voters normally turn out in the morning and the snow hit in the morning. <laughs> and it was better in the afternoon and so that did have an impact, but it wasn't the, the main impact. The main impact was, I think Basil's right about it. Uh, the the about name recognition? Yeah, but name, Ed, name recognition. You mean, know, I, I think also Tom Suozzi really distanced himself from President Biden that was on the, the migration thing. It, it, I think that played a big part. I mean, I don't know. You're the... It, it, Rosanna, if, if Mozzie had the verbal ability to stick him with Biden, and he had a 100% voting record for Biden, and Biden's... Uh, polls are in the crapper because Bidenomics isn't working because of inflation and because of the unvetted migrants. Both of those are issues that are big in Nassau and cutting against, uh, against Biden and the really was to nationalize it was the issue and to make Biden the issue. Yeah, yeah. So, so Basil, what does this mean for the national election going forward? Do you think that, you know, obviously the polls were wrong about how close <laughs> no. it was between Tom Suozzi and, and Mazi Bella yesterday. Do you think the polls are wrong uh, with the presidential race? Well, um, I think that I think weather did have a lot to do with with changing the way those those polls sort of represented the final outcome. But I would say, you know, we do we have to do this again in November, mm -hmm. and uh, Biden and Trump will be on the ballot. You're going to have a higher turnout. I think the race does become more nationalized at that point, um, and I imagine that uh, the Democrats, particularly with uh, Hakeem Jeffries, really focusing on what's happening in the state to win back uh, the House. Um, we're going to be seeing a different dynamic in the suburbs and in the Hudson Valley. But it, it would work for Democrats if we, if we can field more moderate candidates. And I'm not, if you're a progressive, you're not going to like that. Uh, but moderate, can, moderate Democrats can be competitive in these seats, and I think that's what, um, that's what a lot of us are going to look at, are gonna look at what's going to happen in those suburbs. You know, Eddie mentioned that we've got to do this again in November, general yeah. election. Tom Swazi has to run again. Y you take a look at it. The districting in New York could be totally different by the time and the impact it has nationally because it's got to be decided by the end of the month? Uh, well, it will decide. It's supposed to be. <laughs> it could go beyond that. You never know. It depends what happens with the Independent Redistricting Commission Thursday. They're meeting. There is basically an agreed upon plan that does not change the districts that much, uh, particularly uh, a bipartisan plan, too, right? A bipartisan plan that come out it doesn't change that much. And the, uh, the leaders in the legislature, the Democrats, said that they would agree with that. I think they just want to get this over and get to the national election. That's true. One question I want to follow up, just you said earlier that had Mozzie Pullup been able to verbally tie Biden to Swazi, do you think she was a, a bad candidate or the wrong no, she candidate? she was a good candidate in her passion with respect to the issues as a, an illegal immigrant who really loves America and she could express that, but she was against unvetted migrants crossing the border and pouring into, pouring into New York. She could have maximized that issue, but it was difficult for her to do it besides what she is. Right. And, and she and expressed it passionately, thing. but you had, with Swazi, you had to get in the details yeah. of yeah. it. I mean, the experience, obviously, you know, yes. was night and day between between Mozzie and Tom Swazi. Yep. That rhymes. Um, <laughs> so what happens what happens in the fall? 
Uh, is Mozzie the Republican candidate going forward? Because she, there were a lot of ads. They spent a lot this of money. A lot of money on oh, spent that a lot was of another money. issue. The, the Democrats <laughs> outspent the Republicans on that two to one. What it was, was the huge final total? Because I've heard, you know, $20 million, uh, all that. Yeah, it, it could have been approaching on both sides $20 million. Wow. So it was twice as much spent by, by the Democrats. And, so. yeah, and to answer your question, you know, whoever the, whoever the Republicans choose to go forward, I, I think you'll see, you'll see a lot of those same issues come to the forefront. Mm -hmm. I imagine you'll still hear uh, a lot about uh, immigration and the migrants. You probably will not hear a lot about reproductive rights because that issue that Republicans have tried to take a victory lap on, uh, you know, that they've withdrawn that a bit because Democrats have had but some wins. You will hear that. a lot about inflation and you the fact that's 20 percent under right. during Biden's uh, administration. And while wages have only gone up about 10 percent and people are feeling that in their paychecks, they can't buy as much as they used to. And that will be the other. That's why Bidenomics. It's always this, about pocketbook uh, issues. You bet. If you two uh, can get economy. along. Why can't, the rest of us exactly. why can't it be this simple? It's never this simple. <laughs> we wouldn't be paid a lot if it were okay. this simple. <laughs> Not to say that we're paid a lot. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Uh, your check is uh, waiting for you. Sure. Yeah. Actually, we don't pay them anything. But thank you so yes, much. Basil it. Smichael, Ed Cox, you are worth a lot to us here on Good Day New York. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys.